will take you to a place where my friends foregather. There are vampires, werewolves, ghouls, every kind of monster you could ever imagine. I am Sador of the Mount Mori. I have come with my forces to conquer you. <laughs> Just a minute, you'll forget that you have any trouble. <laughs> you are one of his kind now. I suppose you know you broke up my home. I didn't know that you were in a home. When did you get out? Let us pray. No! Deliver his hearts from all evil spirits, all vain imaginings, projections and phantasms, and all deceits of the evil. Welcome to the B Movie Cinema Show. I'm your host, Mr. Hyde. And I'm your co host, The Horror Chick. We're here to talk about everything from classic horror to sci fi movies and everything in between. Yep, and we are especially fond of classic horror. That's right. We love the old fashioned scares, the suspenseful plots, and the iconic characters. Yep, and we are here to share our love of these classic movies with you. So whether you're a fan of Bella Lugosi, Boris Karloff, Vincent Price, or Christopher Lee, we've got something for you. Yes, we do. So join us each week as we explore the dark, twisted, and sometimes bizarre world of classic movies. And prepare to be scared. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the B-Movie Cinema Show. And today we have a um, classic festive holiday movie thingy. <laughs> I was going totally somewhere else with that, but real you know, classic that because I was, uh, you know, reading my notes while I was talking. Uh, yeah, so welcome to the season finale of the Christmas uh, special. Santa Claus is coming to town. Of course, with me is my co-host, Horror Chick. Hello, hello, hello! I can't believe we're on a season finale. I know, me neither. It's that? gone by fast. It's right? up. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Uh, well, this it, one is a great one to finish the year on, definitely. Yes, yes it is. Um, in a, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about it on the podcast, but this brought back so many childhood memories. It sure did. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, I definitely sure. had a few tears watching it. It was just, it's, it really is part of a, a time you know, with things were just so, so much simpler and, and, and pure, you know, and it's just, it's just lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Um, so I hope everyone had a good week. Um, there is a special announcement at the end of the show's credits. So if you want to see what's new for season three, stay tuned. Um, if you decide to bow out, I will put them on the, um, discord and youtube as well so everyone who misses it can see it sounds good yeah so santa claus is coming to town yeah so uh so this movie uh is goes all the way back to 1970 it is a stop motion style christmas tv special produced by rankin bass productions in new york 
Uh, it's narrated by the wonderful Fred Astaire and stars the voices of the equally wonderful Mickey Rooney, Keenan Wynn, Roby Lester, Joan Gardner, and Paul Fries, as well as an assistant song performance by the Westminster Children's Choir. The film tells the story of how Santa Claus and several Claus-related Christmas traditions actually came to be. It is based on the hit Christmas song, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, which was written by J. Fred Coots and Haven Gillespie for Leo Feist Incorporated and introduced on radio by Eddie Cantor in 1934 on the story of St. Nicholas. Just reading that gives you just warm, fuzzy feelings. It does. It oh, does. Holiday and, cheer. Yeah, I know. I know. And and again, it just brings back some really lovely childhood memories. So All right. So back everybody. Yeah. So, so sit back everybody for the next hour. And enjoy some holiday Christmas special. Hope you got your eggnog or your your. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to spike the eggnog, man. Oh yeah. I hate egg. eggnog. Is disgusting. Blurred. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now with that being said, here's the movie, everyone. <laughs> Today, children everywhere are making preparations for an event of world shaking significance the annual visit of Santa Claus. Informed sources report legions of junior citizens are making monumental efforts not to cry and not to bout. Meanwhile, Letters by the thousands have been flooding postal facilities at the North Pole. Doggone thing always conks out when you... Well, hello there. Uh, my name's Special Delivery Kluger, SD for short. Oh, I've got lots of letters for Santa today. And every year they're the same. Some ask for toys, but a lot ask questions. Like you take this one. I bet one of you wrote it. Dear Santa, why do you wear a red suit? Uh-huh. I thought so. And this one. My turn. Dear Santa, why do you come down the chimney when I'm asleep? How about these? Why do you have whiskers? Why do you live at the North Pole? Why do you leave presents and Why do you always come on why Christmas is your Eve? Why does some reindeer? people call you Chris Kingo? Why? 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 Now, hold on, hold on. I can answer all your questions because I know everything about Santa. Now, Santa is a busy man. He has no time to play. He's got millions and millions of stockings to fill on Christmas Day. So you better write your letter now and mail it right away because he's getting ready with his reindeers and his sleigh. So you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. So you want to know all about Santa, eh? Best place to start is at the very beginning, when 
that Santa was just a little baby. You mean Santa was once <laughs> a baby? Of course. Everybody's got to be a baby at least once in their lives. Now, this was years and years ago, oh, way back. In one of the northern countries, there was a small city called Somnitown. It was a cold, cold place which shivered in the shadows of the strange mountain of the whispering winds. Now, the main reason for all this gloom was the mayor, a mean old grouch of a fellow who was known as Burgermeister Meisterburger. <laughs> Herr Burgermeister, Herr Burgermeister, look what was discovered on your front stoop. What? What, Grinsley? The milk? The daily paper? No, sir. A baby. Oh, is that all? A, a baby? And there's a note. Please, sir, take care of my child and protect him from the dangers of the mountain of the whispering winds. He will be exceptional if only given the love he needs. I, Burgermeister, Meister Burger, take care of a baby? Outrageous! What's its name? This is the only clue, sir. It says... Claws. Oh, take the little uh, baggage to the orphan asylum. That's the proper place for foundlings anyway. <laughs> Get the brat out of here! Oh, the sleigh! It broke away. Oh, my goodness. Where are you, baby claws? Oh, oh, do come back. Come back. Well, that strange wind blew the little sleigh right up to the mountain of the whispering winds. Well, you see, that mountain was the home of the awful, the terrible. Oh, I hate to even say his name. That mountain was the home of the Winter Warlock, the strange hermit of the North, who lived alone in a ghostly palace of ice, practicing his strange spells and snowy incantations. The animals knew they had to hide that baby, and fast. They knew where that baby belonged, so, Quick as they could, they started on their way. Where? Where? Well, you see, just beyond the mountain was Rainbow River Valley. And there, by a bend in the magical stream, was the home of a jolly family of little people. Elves, you might call them. Kringle was their name. The door was answered by an elf named Dingle. Dingle Kringle, to be precise. Yes? Who's there? There's who? Ooh! Wiggle my ears and tickle my toes, methinks I see a baby's nose. It's more than a nose, there's a whole baby attached to it. Better call my brothers. Wingle, Bingle, Tingle, Zingle. What is it, Bingle? It's a baby, Zingle. A baby what, Wingle? A baby, baby, Kingle. I like babies, Bingle. Our baby's the best baby of them all, Wingle. They brought the little fella to the elf queen, Tanta Kringle. A baby! What a splendid idea! He shall live with us and sleep with us and drink warm cocoa with us. What will we call him, Tanta Kringle? His license says Claws. Unusual name. However, we shall call him Chris. Chris Kringle. Yay! Well, those little Kringles took that baby to their hearts. Soon as he was old enough, they set up a little school and taught him all the important things. How to read and write and talk and count stars on a crystal night and how to make toys. Make toys? Oh, sure. That was the Kringles' main occupation. They were toy makers. The only problem was there were no children to give them to. You remember Samba Town was on the other side of the mountain of the whispering winds and the little elves just couldn't make it past the winter warlock. So, the toys kind of stacked up some. It's really quite sad. We will never be able to transport our toys over the mountain. Someday when I'm bigger, I'll take them for you, Tonta Kringle. 
Ah, oh, that will be the day. We will be great toy makers again as we once were. When was that, Tonta? Oh, years and years ago. The Kringles were world-renowned. For, you know, we were the very first royal toy makers. The first toy makers to the king. It's a difficult responsibility When you accept an appointment from his majesty You must strive for just the perfect quality When you're the first toy maker to the king All the soldiers must stand erect For the kingdom they protect The balls must bounce much higher If they're to please his royal sire The ballerinas must pirouette Upon their musical toes And the clowns must make a king forget All his kingly bows It's a difficult responsibility When you accept an appointment from his majesty You must strive for just the perfect quality When you're the first toy maker to the must never sink and the dollies always think the teddy bears be furry if they're to gain his royal curry the jack-in-boxes must always pop at every regal command and the kangaroos must learn to hop into the prince's hand it's a difficult responsibility when you accept an appointment from his majesty you must strive for just the perfect quality Then you're the first toy maker to the king So that's why he makes such wonderful toys. That's why. The Kringles taught him everything they knew. Of course, Chris had other teachers. The animals. But the seals taught him the most important things. How to have fun and... Oh, oh, oh! Oh! Oh, 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 oh! oh. How to laugh. Real hard and wonderful, like he meant it. Ho, 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 ho! Well, years went by, and finally Chris was a fine young man. I'm a man now, Tanta. I can take those toys across the mountain of the Whispering Winds. It would be nice if someone played with our toys. If only one of my dollies could be held tight by a little girl. It's decided then. Tomorrow, I leave for Sombertown. Yay! Tana Kringle? Uh, I was just packing. Did I wake you up? I was awake anyhow. I made this for your trip. A real Kringle suit. So that's where he got the red suit. Yep. And he's always worn one just like it, right to this day. Well, Chris said goodbye to all his friends, elf and animal. Just as night was falling, Chris started to make his way through the dismal forest, which lay at the foot of the Warlock's Mountain. Hey! Why, why, you're a penguin. Uh, well, what is a penguin doing here? You're looking for a stick? Uh, a branch? A log? A pole? Uh, uh, the North Pole? Uh, no, the South Pole. Uh, uh, well, little feller, that's on the other end of the earth. You're just about as lost as you can get. You better travel with me. You need someone to take care of you. Now, now, cut that out. Come on, Ed, Ed, Topper. I'll call you Topper. Okay? Uh, uh. Come on. This way, little feller. Who nears my mountain? Go back. Or you are doomed. Come on, Topper. <laughs> I shall get him when he returns. He's got to cross my mountain on the way home. And then... <laughs> no more being the nice guy. <laughs>
<laughs> we made it, Topper. And, and look, somber town. Just sitting there waiting for us and our good Kringle toys. That's what they thought. But what they didn't realize was at that very moment in the Sombertown City Hall. His Honor, Burgermeister Meisterburger. Yeah, as I suspected. You've broken your funny bone. Oh, what caused me to trip, Grinsley? This, sir. Hmm? A toy? As I suspected, I hate toys. And toys hate me. Either they are going or I am going. And I am certainly not going, Grinsley. I have a job for you to do. Now take this down. It's a difficult responsibility that you accept from the number one lawmaker, me. Have it known throughout the land from sea to sea. There'll be no more toy makers to the king. All the tin soldiers melt them down. Wash the face of every clown, each bouncing ball deflated. No, I don't want to debate it. The ballerinas who pirouette arrest their musical toes, outlaw the dolls and sink the boats. They bring me only woes. It's a difficult responsibility that you accept from the number one lawmaker, me. Have it known throughout the land from sea to sea. There'll be no more toy makers to the key. Every jack in the box be sealed. Till my wounded pride be healed. Stuff animals, unstuff them. When a child objects, rebuff them. No more drummers who rat a tat tat. No buglers who root a toot toot. Don't let me see another toy. Or you will feel my boot. It's a difficult responsibility that he extracts from the number one lock keeper, me. Be it known throughout the land from sea to sea. Boys are hereby declared illegal, immoral, unlawful, and Anyone found with a toy in his possession will be placed under arrest and thrown in the dungeon. There'll be no more toy makers to the key. Now hold and back now. Give me all your toys by order of the Burgermeister. <laughs> The townspeople didn't know what to make of Chris. Hi there. <laughs> nice day, friend. Don't hire me. Good morning, ma'am. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, young man, wearing such outlandish clothes. Clothes? Look, all I want to do is give away these toys. Toys? 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 Oh, oh, get him out of here! Help! 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 What did I say? Uh. Well, what's going on here? We're doing our chores. Yeah, and no more playing. No playing, eh? Are you uh, washing out uh, stockings? Uh-huh. It's one of our daily duties. Then we hang them by the fireplace so they dry overnight. That's the only way they judge you around here, by how many chores you do and how clean your stockings are. Is that so? Well, uh, you don't have to look so gloom about it. Why? I don't know. I just don't like sour faces. Now, I got some real nice goodies for you. But not if you look like this. You better watch out. Better not cry. Better not pout. Why? I'm telling you why. Yeah? Because I came to town. And look what I brought. Toys. Real toys. Why, sure. Compliments of the Kringles. 
But, but what about the burglar meister? What about him? If he wants a toy, he may have one. I'll save him a big red yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's play. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Wait. You must not play with toys. And uh, who are you? That's Miss Jessica, our new school teacher. Chris Kringle at your service, Miss Jessica. How dare you come here in those ridiculous clothes and make fun of me? Clothes again? <laughs> I wasn't making... And what do you mean by giving the children toys? Don't you know toys are against the law? What? Yep. It's true. Well, gee, that's kind of a silly law. If the Burgermeister saw you, we would all be in great danger. In danger from toys? Why, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. Toys are frivolous, impractical, unproductive, and... What's that? For you. A china doll? I always wanted one when I was a little girl. But my parents wouldn't... Thank you. I, I mean... Watch out for that, Dolly. She's a hardened criminal, I hear. Well, maybe it is a silly law. I, I mean... Well, what do you say you help me hand out these presents, huh? It's, it's too big a job for one oversized Kringle and a little lost penguin. <laughs> oh, what a good girl. Oh, what a good boy. <laughs> Oh, what a big smile All because of a toy If you sit on my lap today A kiss, a toy is the price you'll pay When you tell what you wish for In a whisper, be prepared to pay If you sit on my lap today A kiss, a toy is the price you'll pay Sit on my left knee, don't be stingy, be prepared to pay. If whenever you take, you give a little back, then whoever you love, will give a little love back. So give a little love, get a little love back. Don't you have a little love, that you want to get back. Perfect day. Everybody is glum. Ah, see all the little children are playing with their toys. <laughs> playing with their toys? Stop in the name of the law. You brats are under arrest. Take them away. Don't arrest those children. It was my fault. I gave them the toys. You? How dare you? You are obviously a nonconformist and a rebel. Me? Rebel? Arrest this man immediately. For you. Do you? A yo-yo? I love yo-yos. I used to be able to do all kinds of tricks. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but you're breaking your own laws. What? What do you think? What? Ooh, 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 I have been bamboozled. Arrest him! Arrest him! Oh, look, he climbs like a squirrel, leaps like a deer, and is as slippery as a seal. After him! He went into the woods. We'll never find him in there. Guess we lost him, Topper. And I uh, slow down now. Ooh wee. <laughs> Wonder where we are. Uh -uh. You are trespassing on the lands of the winter warlock. Hey! Hey, let go! Let go! Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Miss Kingle. You disturbed me for the very last time. Now I have you. And you'll never get away. <laughs> Look, uh, before you do me in, would you tell your tree friends to let me loose for a second? You see, I, I have something for you. What is this? A trick? Oh, 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 no, sir, Mr. Warlock. Or may I call you Winter? Mr. Warlock, if you please. Oh, well, I managed to save one little toy. And I'd like you to have it. You, if you wish to give me a present? A, a toy? Yes, sir. But nobody ever gives mean old warlock a toy. I'd like to start a new custom. If you just call off... What? Well, well, oh, oh, yeah, that... <laughs> oh, yes, of course. But well, you mustn't mind the tree monsters. Their bark is worse than their bite. <laughs> their bark is worse than their bite. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Willie Willow. Peter Pine, release the Kringle. Hmm? <laughs> and no tricks now. Oh, oh, no, no, sir, Mr. Warlock. A choo-choo. I've always wanted one. <laughs> What's that? My icy heart. It's melting. Well, look, Mr. Warlock. Please, please. Call me Winter. Winter? Oh, yes, yes. Suddenly, my whole outlook has changed from bad to good. Great. Ah, but will it last? I really am a mean and despicable creature at heart, you know. It's so difficult to really change. Difficult? <laughs> why, why, look here. Changing from bad to good is as easy as taking your first step. Put one foot in front of the other And soon you'll be walking across the floor Put one foot in front of the other And soon you'll be walking out the door you never will get where you're going If you never get up on your feet Come on, there's a good tailwind blowing A fast walking man is hard to beat Put one foot in front of the other And soon you'll be walking across the floor and soon you'll be walking out the door If you want to change your direction If your time of life is at hand Well, don't be the rule, be the exception A good way to start is to stand Put one foot in front of the other and soon you'll be walking across the floor. Put one foot in front of the other. And soon you'll be walking out the door. If I want to change the reflection, I see in the mirror each morn. Oh, you do? You mean that it's just my election? Just that. To vote for a chance to be reborn? You put one foot in front of the other and soon you are walking across the floor. You put one foot in front of the other and soon you are walking out the door. Put one foot in front of the other. And soon you are walking across the floor. Put one foot in front of the other. And soon you'll be walking out the door. Well, there's 
There's all kinds of ways we can help each other. You can bring me nice new toys, and I can assist you with my magic. Eh, uh, how? Oh, I'll show you. Gaze into my magic crystal snowball. Someone is looking for you. Chris? Chris? Jessica? Go to her lab. Oh! Only me, ma'am. I thought I'd never find you again. I wanted to bring you these. Letters and notes from the children of Sombra Town, asking for more toys. You see, the Burgermeister destroyed the ones you brought. You tell those young'uns there'll be plenty of toys, but only if they behave themselves. No crying or pouting or... No, I, I'll know. I got ways of knowing. My, uh, personal friend, the warlock, taught me this. Yes, sir? I can see them when they're sleeping, and I know when they're awake. My goodness. You know if they're bad or good? Uh-huh. So you tell them to be good, for goodness sake. Oh, thank you, Chris. For what? For being so kind. For just being you. Golly. Now, uh, about the toys. I'll have to kind of slip them in after dark when the Burgermeister is asleep. So you tell all the boys and girls to leave their doors unlocked tomorrow night. Well, Chris went back to the Kringles to get some more toys. And what do you think those crazy Kringles did? Yes, sir, they all moved in on all winter, lock, stock, and toy bench. I guess they figured it made sense to move the source of supply close to the demand. Oh, I'm crowded! <laughs> but, but at least I'm loved. Chris made a list of all the children and the toys they wanted. He checked it over once, then checked it over twice. He tried to figure out just who was naughty and who was nice. Well, I guess they're all pretty nice. So he packed up and was off to Sombertown. Uh, uh, uh. When Chris was safe inside Sombertown, he tried all the doors. And if they were open, he knew a child lived inside who was expecting a toy. This is outrageous. Toys! Toys everywhere! What sort of criminal is this Kringle? Sneaking into houses by night. I hereby decree that all the town's doors and windows will be locked tight against this prowler. Well, more and more letters came for Chris from the children. Jessica would gather them together and then give them to the animals, who would deliver them. And Chris, well, he just couldn't turn anybody down. But this time, he found all the doors were locked to him. Now, there was one special toy he just had to deliver. Susie, a tiny little girl who was very, very sick, had asked Chris for a toy Noah's Ark. Chris just couldn't disappoint her. Uh, uh. Topper? Shh. Uh, what is uh, it? Uh, you have an idea? Uh, uh, uh. How to get into the house, but not through the door? Uh, uh, Up? Uh, the sky? Uh, uh. The moon, the stars, the chimney. Go down the chimney. Great idea. Well, here goes. And that's how he started going down chimneys. Oh, now I understand. That's fun. What a great job I've got. <laughs> Come on, there's a lot more chimneys to explore tonight. <laughs> more toys discovered by the hearths and the mantelpieces. Each house in Samba Town will be searched before dawn. If any more toys are found by the fireplace, they will be confiscated, and the children severely punished so be it Down! but those letters just kept right on coming doggone how can i get the toys to them they gotta have toys otherwise their life will be nothing but school and chores and washing their stockings and the, the stockings the stockings. take this to jessica she'll know what to tell the children the premises. If you find so much as one marble or half a jack, 
The house is under arrest. Double time. Hop. We can't find anything here, Burgermeister. Good. Very good. No toys. Nothing but drying stockings. <laughs> As is proper. About face. Forward. March. Hop, 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 hop. Phew. Thank heaven there were no toys. And that's how he started leaving presents in stockings. More toys? But how? Oh, blessed it on my... <laughs> I will do what I should have done a long time ago. I will set a trap for that bothersome Kringle. His next visit to Sambertown will be his last. Oh, no, I must warn Chris. But she was too late. Chris had already left with his toys. Oh, Mr. Warlock. Uh, winter, please. You must help me stop Chris. Please, use your magic. Oh, uh, alas. I've been disenchanted. I have no more powers. I can't even do card tricks. Oh, that's terrible. What shall we do? Nobody is going to do anything. You are all under arrest for defying the law and making toys. And for being an accomplice to public enemy number one, Chris Kringle. To the dungeon! Oh, I tell you, things didn't look good. And meanwhile, back in Sombertown... Stop! You are under arrest! Not me! Wait! Look! What can I do? You have me. <laughs> to the dungeon! Children of Sombertown, you will never, never play again! <laughs> Well, sir, it looked like Chris was finally beaten. Herr Burgermeister, please, you must set Chris and the little Kringles free. <laughs> set them free? Never. I promise they will never disturb you again. Ah, what good are your promises? Goodbye, good luck, and good riddance. My own town turned against me. Well... My eyes are beginning to open for the very first time to what life is really all about. And I know just where I belong. With Chris. Wherever he is. Today is not the end. It's only the beginning. All the little cares Picked along the way Suddenly have disappeared Well, 
Jessica realized the first thing she had to do was set Chris and the others free. Mr. Warlock. Hmm? Oh, oh, Jessica. Oh, Winter, please. What are you doing here? Trying to set you all free. But I don't know how. If only you had your magic powers back. Alas, I have nothing but a few meager magical leftovers here in my pockets. A short-circuited wand, useless. A dried-up magic potion, powerless. The tiny stubs of a hundred or so magic candles. And a few last handfuls of magic feed corn, just junk. <laughs> oh, me. Magic feed corn? Well, it's of no use to us. It can't dissolve prison walls. All it can do is make reindeer fly. Reindeer? Fly? <laughs> yes, yes. Ridiculous, isn't it? Later that night, Jessica rounded up some of Chris's reindeer friends. They just had to take one nibble of that corn and... Wee! Look at them go! I bet you know their names. Dasher and Dancer. And Prancer and Vixen. And Comet and Cupid. And Donner and Blitzer. Yes, sir. And don't forget... Me. <laughs> no, that, that's another story. Let's go, Donner. Let's go. Onward, Vixen, onward. Oh, well, I still have a little magic. Oh, oh, oh I'm not such a loser after all. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and that's how Santa's reindeer started to fly. That's just the way it happened. We Meisterburgers shall hunt them down throughout the land. Those rebels will not have one moment's peace until they are captured again. <laughs> it's not even safe here. The guardsmen will be coming back. We'll have to push on. I'll go anywhere you say, Chris. Like Robin Hood of old, Chris suddenly found himself called an outlaw. Wanted, dead or alive, the terrible toy maker. Toy maker. Chris Kringle. <laughs> well, those posters are not going to do them any good now. Oh, Chris, let me take a good look at it. Pretty grand, eh? <laughs> it's perfect. Well, since I'm a Kringle, I had to grow one sooner or later. <laughs> so that's why he has whiskers. Ah, but you should not use your Kringle name. It's dangerous. Not call myself Kringle? What other name would suit me? There is one. You were wearing this when we found you as a baby. See what it says. Claus. Claus? Your real name. You must use it now. I knew it. I knew it. That's where he got his name from. Mm hmm And it was that name he asked Jessica to share. It was that name Jessica agreed to take as his wife. Jessica. Oh, she became Mrs. Santa Claus. It was a lovely wedding. Yes, sir. They held it on Christmas Eve. And since no town would welcome them, they stood before the Lord in the silent winter woods. And a grove of pine trees was their cathedral. They put all that pretty stuff onto the pine trees. And then Chris and Jessica placed their wedding gifts to each other under the trees. No church ever looked nicer. Oh, please. Let me have just a little magic. Uh. The very first Christmas trees. What better way to tell you how much Than a token of affection placed beneath a Christmas tree. The custom started long, long ago when first the wise men dreamed. Gave 
gifts of love, of love to a new born baby. But there was no rest for our little group of outcasts. Soon they were forced up beyond the reaches of civilization, up far past the most northern city, past where even most animals live, up to the North Pole. This is it, people. Oh, yes, this is it. We'll build ourselves a nice house. <laughs> Heck, oh, while we're at it, we'll build ourselves a castle <laughs> and the best toy factory in the world. And that's just what they did. And in no time at all... Santa's castle and workshop up at the North Pole. Well, as soon as the buildings were built, they settled in and started making toys in earnest. Oh, they needed toys. Because you see, despite everything the Meisterbergers tried, the legend of Kris Kringle, or Claus, as he now was known, just grew and grew. And as the years went by, Animals delivered letters by the thousands. Oh, just look at this list. Well, load up the sleigh. <laughs> ah, this is the fourth trip this month. You see, he still had to travel by night because he was considered an outlaw. But when did they stop calling him an outlaw? Well, as time went by, that changed. You see, the Meisterbergers, they kind of died off and fell out of power. And by and by, the good people realized how silly the Meisterberger laws were. Well, everybody had a wonderful laugh and then forgot all about them. <laughs> yes, sir, the older he got, the more famous he became and the more folks loved him. He's very good, isn't he? Uh-huh, you bet. Is that why he's called Santa Claus? That's why, honey. That's why. It turned into quite a proposition. I can hardly keep up with the orders. I'm afraid I'm going to have to limit my journeys to a one a year. But on which night should I go out? I wonder. It wasn't a hard decision to make. They chose, of course, the holiest night of the year, the night of profound love, which was the perfect night for giving. Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve. And that's how it all started. How goes it, Mr. Warlock? Winter, please. I've got my magic power working just fine. I can cast up a big freeze, yes, sir. I think I can guarantee a white Christmas. Wonderful. Then let's be off. Oh, well! And that is the story of Santa Claus. So wonderful. Everybody must love him. Well, most everybody. Oh, he's not considered an outlaw anymore. But there still are some. Eh, bah, humbug. Christmas is a bother. The noise, the crowds. I really wish it were outlawed. How can they talk about Santa Claus when there's so much unhappiness in the world? Poor misguided folks. They missed the whole point. Lots of unhappiness. Maybe so. But doesn't Santa take a little bit of that unhappiness away? Doesn't a smile on Christmas morning scratch out a tear cried on a Saturday? Not much, maybe. But what would happen if we all tried to be like Santa and learn to give as only he can give of ourselves, our talents, our love, and our hearts? Maybe if we could all learn Santa's beautiful lesson, maybe there would finally be peace on earth and goodwill toward man. Hey, it's getting late, and I've got these letters to deliver. And you better be getting home, too. And remember, behave yourselves, because Santa can still look into his magic snowball and see just what you're up to. And now that you know all about him, you can be darn sure that comes snow or high water. Santa Claus is coming to town. 
You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list and checking it twice. He's gonna find out who's not and nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. The kids in girl and boy land will have a jubilee. They're gonna build a toy land town all around the Christmas tree. So you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not cry. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming. Santa Claus is coming. Santa Claus is coming to town. Merry Christmas. Okay, we're back. Hope you enjoyed that uh, trip down memory lane. If you want to hear more of our thoughts on the movie, as well as the 1958 James, I put 1985 in my notes. I'm like, good God. You might backwards <laughs> what? <laughs> As, so if you want to hear our no thoughts on this movie, as well as the 1958 James Stewart, Kim Novak, witchy Christmassy movie book, Bell and Candle, then head over to our podcast, The Cryptcast, and link will be in the description. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in this year. It has been a pleasure bringing the show to you, um, and your chats have been fantastic. Yes, no thank you so much, everybody, for, you know, continually turning up and supporting us and uh, being in the chat. Um, thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. And I hope um, everyone has a wonderful Christmas. Yes, you know, have a nice Christmas and holiday season. And we will see you next year for season three. Take mm -hmm. care.
Uh, that's all, folks.